Hey, it's Freiberger, and I'm about to show you a sample episode of a show that we do on MotorTrendOnDemand.com that's called Roadkill Extra. It shows up every single weekday. It's got stuff like outtakes from shows, behind the scenes stuff, tech tips, you name it. You can see them all with a free trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. This road collector is going to be all about supercharging. This is going to be basics for people who maybe don't understand some of the stuff we do on roadkill with turbos and big roots blowers and stuff like that. So first of all, what is supercharging? Basically, it's anything that you can do in order to cram air through an engine at a pressure that is above atmospheric. So a roots supercharger is a supercharger or a blower. A turbo is a supercharger. A lot of people don't think of it that way. And a centrifugal supercharger is a supercharger, once again, often called a blower. The thing is that they work different ways. The roots blower, which is one of my personal favorites even though it's the least efficient, it's the best looking, as you can see here on the Crusher Impala. Uh, it is what's called a positive displacement supercharger because as the belt, which is driven by the crankshaft, turns the supercharger, it turns two rotors that are inside the blower. They turn like this, and there's three lobes that interact with each other to push air through the thing. And for every one revolution of the blower, it displaces in this case, because it's an 871 supercharger, it displaces 448 cubic inches of air. So as RPM increase and it's cramming all that air through there, regardless of RPM, it's 448 cubic inches per revolution, but boost goes up as RPM goes up, and that's how it makes power. So why does an engine make more power if you're forcing air through it? Well, it doesn't if you're only forcing air through it. The thing about this is that with more air crammed into the engine, it means that you can draw more fuel into the engine. I've previously explained that the reason why a higher compression ratio engine makes more power is that it takes all of that air and compresses it into a smaller space with the fuel molecules and puts the fuel molecules closer together so that it's a more violent explosion. Where in this case, it's actually adding more fuel molecules and more air. So a lot of people think of it as having an increased effective compression ratio, but I don't think that's really the case. And this is an interesting science, and this is really just sort of my theory off the top of my head, and I can't call it accurate, but it's what I've sort of derived. People will say that if you've got a supercharger at say 10 pounds of boost, that it'll take your engine at say eight and a half to one compression and make it behave like an engine that has 14 to one compression. I find that not to be the case. It actually has a better torque curve than a naturally aspirated engine. And also the supercharged engine could tend to run on lower octane pump gas, whereas the high compression engine won't. And I feel that the reason is that it's bringing more air in and more fuel and that is the key to preventing the pre-ignition or detonation that you might have if you have just high compression and natural aspiration. And so that's what makes superchargers really cool is that they make a ton of bottom end torque. The root style does. Now, the thing about the others, the turbos and the belt-driven centrifugal supercharger, which is kind of like a belt-driven turbo, is that their rate of boost increase is much more radical as RPM increase, whereas this is a little bit more linear. And so the superchargers that are turbos or uh, centrifugals tend to make more high RPM power. The roots tends to make more low RPM power if we're looking at the same boost for each engine. The reason that the Roots is far less efficient is because it can take 50 to 100 horsepower just to rotate the blower. So it's killing that much horsepower while it's making horsepower by shoving air. So the cylinder's making a whole lot of power, it's just that it's not all making it to the flywheel because it's getting eaten by the parasitic loss of the blower itself, and obviously you just don't have that with the turbo. Um, oh, here's something that I wanted to mention. If you saw the episode of our Engine Masters show recently where we took a stock short block 350 Chevy with cast pistons and we put a Y-end 671 blower on the thing, 
uh, I did a stand up at that explaining sort of the history of how these blowers came to be on hot rods. And I mentioned that it was a GMC supercharger that it originally came on diesel engines. And a lot of people tried to correct me saying, you're wrong. That's not a GMC. That's a Detroit diesel. Well, here's breaking news. When that Detroit diesel two stroke was invented, Detroit Diesel was owned by General Motors and hence GMC. And that's why these things are called GMC superchargers. They were originally used on those two stroke diesels for what's called uniflow scavenging. And this is where I'm really gonna go off the reservation because I will admit I don't understand diesels. But my understanding is that what the blower does in that application is when the valves are open as the pistons uncover them and when the exhaust valve opens, it is blowing the exhaust clear through. So it's really more for scavenging and not as much for making boost pressure as they are in this application. And a guy named uh, Barney Navarro is generally recognized as being the first guy to take one of those GMC superchargers off a Detroit diesel and mount it to a hot rod. And he used a 471, oh, I take it back, it might have been a 371 or even a 271 supercharger on his uh, Roadster and raced it up at El Mirage. Um, so what's 371 and 271? The way these things are rated is the engine that they came off of, if it's a 271, it was a two-cylinder, two-stroke diesel engine at 71 cubic inches of displacement per cylinder. And so you can see that that follows 371 for a three-cylinder, 471 for a four-cylinder, and so on and so forth, to the point that the aftermarket picked that up, and they now make things as big as 1471. This happens to be an eight right here. The cases get longer and longer the larger the blower is, and the displacement of air gets bigger and bigger. So that's pretty much what you got about the awesome supercharger, and hopefully you understand a little bit more about how they make power, which is cramming in more air to cram in more fuel to make a bigger explosion and huge torque and power. And that's what we'll be working on here on the Crusher Impala, as I think Steve and I are gonna jerk this engine out and put it on the dyno again to just see if it's still fresh, tune it up. This thing made 700 horsepower at one time. It's a 489 big block Chevy, and uh, I can't wait to run it because I love those blower motors. If you need more Roadkill Extra, go sign up right now.